the U.S. just upgraded this lethal fighter jet. The American Air Force was about to eliminate its entire fleet of A-10 Thunderbolt IIs, sometimes known as Warthogs, just six years ago. When it came to budget cuts, the Air Force had to entirely phase out the A-10, according to General Mark Welsh III, who was then the USAF Chief of Staff, and new F-35 units had to be set up with the freed-up resources. But in almost a decade, the A-10 Warthog is getting ready for its biggest update. Let's find out! Hey guys, welcome to our channel Future Warplanes, where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, and military planes from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please click on that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin! The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog, is known for its toughness, both on the battlefield and as an institution. The Warthog will not die, whether under enemy fire or due to budget cuts at home. Wells claimed that divesting the close air support stalwart would save $3.7 billion over the next five years of defense spending and another $500 million in cost avoidance for unnecessary upgrades. What a difference a generation makes. In 2020, the A-10 is not only still in service, but it is getting a slew of upgrades to keep it relevant for years to come. New weapons, a new cockpit layout, and a tactical overhaul are among the elements in the works to keep the hog's tusks sharp and its community a meaningful contributor on the front lines of battle. The the A-10 is designed to annihilate Soviet tanks on the plains of Northern Europe, and it was built around the General Electric GAU-8A Avenger 30mm cannon and its seven barrels, which can dish out devastating punishment to armor. The Warthog's 11 hardpoints have evolved over time, from carrying dumb iron bombs and uh, rockets to hauling the most advanced guided ordnance. Despite earning a fearsome reputation during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and evolving with the times as new technology became available, the venerable ground attack jet has repeatedly faced criticism from within the Air Force when it comes to budget cuts. The USAF claimed that the F-35A Lightning II should replace the A-10 by highlighting how the Warthog was no longer capable of surviving in contemporary high-threat situations dotted with cutting-edge air defense systems. It was announced to the A-10 community that the protracted conflict in Afghanistan had come to an end and that close air support specialists were no longer required. A-10 backers in Congress aggressively opposed the ideas throughout this time, arguing that they would have a negative influence on the USAF's capacity to carry out this task. Some sought a fly-off to establish beyond a doubt that the F-35 could successfully replace the A-10 in this duty. Operation Inherent Resolve, or OIR, the American-led effort to destroy the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, was ramping up quickly in 2014, and pressure was put on the U.S. Air Force to increase its engagement in the expanding battle as rumors of retiring the A-10 intensified. At home, the House and Senate Armed Services Committee placed requirements in the fiscal year 2015 funding proposal that virtually prevented efforts to retire the A-10 fleet. The A-10 was largely salvaged by a perfect storm. In October 2014, the 163rd Fighter Squadron of the Indiana Air National Guard, also known as the Black Snakes, went to Kuwait as part of a theater security package to the Central Command Area of Operations, or CENTCOM. The unit was promptly reassigned to Afghanistan to protect American interests. Army withdrawals from those war-torn nations forward operating bases. But after just one month in the field, pressure mounted to send the Black Snakes back to Kuwait to join the growing anti-ISIS campaign. The usage of the A-10 by senior officials was once more highlighted by the swift deployment of the aircraft on combat missions. As time went on, various Warthog squadrons were requested to join the OIR mission, providing CAS as well as protection for coalition operations during combat search and rescue. The plan to phase out the A-10 had a ripple effect on support and improvements. Both the A-10 program office at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, and the 422nd Test and Evaluation Squadron at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, have essentially stopped doing operational testing for the active duty A-10 aircraft. By the summer of 2016, however, with OIR in height, it was all being reversed with a fresh push for A-10 mission critical improvements. A rolling sequence of upgrades quickly got back on track after the scheduled end of the A-10 temporarily halted some supply chains. Air Force Major Matthew Kading, the A-10 test director for the 59th TES, explains that in 2017, the lightweight airborne recovery system V-12 was installed on all active duty Air National Guard and Reserve Command A-10s to enable pilots to communicate with people on the ground, such as downed pilots and pararescue men, more effectively. 
to provide crucial combat search and rescue information. This technology was integrated into Operational Flight Program Suite 8 and is presently included on every A-10 aircraft. The 422nd and 59th Test and Evaluation Squadrons on active duty, as well as the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve Command Test Center at Tucson Air National Guard Base in Arizona, now collaborate on testing projects as a community with constrained resources. There have been multiple unsuccessful attempts to downsize the fleet of the USAF's 281 A-10s. According to the proposed USAF budget for fiscal year 2021, 44 Warthogs or three squadrons worth of jets will be eliminated. The likelihood of this happening is low, however significant A-10 upgrades are now underway. A new Common Fleet initiative is being planned as a result of the A-10's revival to maintain the type in service incredible through to 2035. Being able to survive in a hostile environment is essential to the A-10's modifications. This entails using more standoff guns at farther ranges in addition to revised tactics to help Warthog pilots evade threats. A-10 operations will advance to include the capacity to deal with some threats with pinpoint accuracy at great distances. The A-10 should be able to swing into more conventional operations if these threats are eliminated. According to Major Kading, survivability is not just about upgrading hardware and software. It's about making sure we're going into battle with the most cutting edge and lethal tactics. We do all of these things, which is what distinguishes the 422nd, 59th TES and the 53rd Wing as a whole as a special organization. There are also ongoing efforts to improve the A-10's ability to operate from remote locations with minimal support. The AGR-20 APKWS-2 is a guided version of the veteran 2.75-inch folded fin aerial rocket that was added to the A-10's arsenal in 2013. The aircraft can now send weapons to multiple targets with a single button press on a single pass, which previously required a significant amount of pilot effort. A-10 pilots can use the 500-pound class GBU-38 or 54 or 2,000-pound class GBU-31 joint direct attack munitions, and the aircraft will notify them of all the intended targets that can be hit in a single run. Suite 9 also included a provision for improved helmet-mounted sight known as Hobbit, or Hybrid Optical Based Inertial Tracker, which is a development of the Thales Vision X Scorpion helmet worn by A-10 pilots since 2013. The improved helmet track pilot's head movements more accurately thanks to a new optical head tracker, which consists of a series of dots in the canopy. The upgrade of A-10As to A-10Cs beginning in 2005 was a huge step forward for the Warthog. Precision weapons, a partial glass cockpit, and a laser designator pod were all added as a result of this. Suite 10 will fly by spring 2021, and that's a critical step in the A-10's modernization cascading. And that's it for today's episode. We truly hope you enjoyed our video for today. If you did, please make sure you hit the like button and share it with all your friends and family. And if you have any questions or comments for us, as always, you are invited to leave them in the comment space down below. We always love touching base with you, our viewers. Also, make sure you are staying plugged in with all of our latest updates by subscribing to the YouTube channel and hit that bell icon while you're at it. That way you're always notified of our latest updates. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.